offerings here to share. And this is a, a basket of tobacco. And this is traditionally given um, as the medicine bundle is opened for throwing of the bone ceremony. It's a welcoming of the spirits, a deep honoring of the spirits. Tobacco has long been a very sacred plant and uh, offered and utilized ceremonially. So this is here, uh, here in the space. The ceremony is uh, what you're seeing in the photo is right, right behind me. So we're in the ceremonial space together. And this is a, a, um, a wooden bowl. So it brings us the tree people. This is some wood I found up in the Hemes Mountains. And we have some bear root, smudging of the bear root medicine. And this is the wing of a hawk. So even though we aren't physically together, you can still feel the energy, the medicine, uh, the trees, uh, the plants, of the hawk washing over you. Just receive, allow it in. Spirit medicine and ceremony are not bound by time and space. So as we gather together, I'd like to just invite you to first gather within where you are. And there's someone who's just emailed for the link. So while I'm sending that link, just take some deep breaths. You wanna be connecting in with your body. Um, as we all connect here together, we're bringing ourselves to the circle. So take some deep breaths. Let yourself feel connected on the inside. And this technology that we're using is a tool so it doesn't define you. Uh, the little boxes, the, the, the flat screens, uh, the mute buttons, You are welcome here. There's no box that can contain you. Your voice, your inner voice is essential to keep alive. Your sharings are welcome. And remember why you've come. What is the what is the purpose for you? What's the calling of your heart to be in ceremony today? It's the gift that each of us bring, uh, why we are here, all the diverse and unique callings. Uh, it, it's what connects us weaves our circle together. Really vital to claim and feel yours. And then take your awareness from within radiating beyond and reach with your attention beyond walls and windows and ceilings and floors to connect with the land, the ecosystem where you are. 
the beings living above and inside the ground, above and inside water, moving around in the air, The winds have really picked up here all of a sudden. And there are beings who really move through all of those different realms. You can honor how they do that kind of dance. And feeling your connection with the land and how the land and all these beings are connected with you. There's an interweaving. So aware of the original peoples, wherever you are of those lands where you are now. The languages and the knowledges and the life ways. Offering your honoring of the generations of the past and the now and to come. And we bring our honoring to the lineage of Katasi the many generations of the people living this way, the lineage of the throwing of the bone ceremony. All the teachers, the elders, the guides that have come together have brought us together, have given the opportunity for us to be together to share the ceremony today. So the throwing of the bones is a calling of the spirit ceremony. It's an ancient traditional healing art. And our question today is about how do we feel our gratitude our connectedness uh, while also honoring grief and losses, our own and others during this time. So here on the bone throwing and the cloth, the ceremonial ground as you see here, these are where the spirits landed when I did the throw. And we began a couple hours ago. So I've been in the field of the ceremony for a while. And each of the bones represents a particular spirit. It's the home of a particular spirit guide. And you'll hear about their uh, uh, medicines, the gifts, their um, uh, responses to our questions today. So the, the throwing of the bones, uh, the spirits have ways they guide us through the story. So, so this is called the first pointer line. It's this long bone piece that begins the story. And so the story begins, the response begins way down at the bottom of, this, of the cloth of the ceremony of the ceremonial cloth. And 
where the spirits are guiding our attention is to uh, our rooting. Just where are you now? This is very much in the present time. It's in the present timeline. It's in the roots, the deep foundation, and it's, and it's essentially in the tap root. So this is speaking of just where are you now in this moment in your life? What's, what's happening um, with you personally? What's happening around you? And just to have a look, just to deeply honor where you are in this particular moment of your life. And especially around these dynamics of gratitude and connectedness, grieving and losses. And then we move up along uh, the flow of this energy line. And ultimately we're taken out into way the above. And we're over here on the side of the feminine, the nonlinear realm. One way of understanding this flow is how the spirits are having, really wanting us to see and experiencing, uh, experience ourselves fully deeply rooted in the earth, the very particularities of our current time, life, and into the great expanse, our, our cosmic connectedness. And also out uh, from this very here and now time of the physical construction of our lives into the dream time, the nonlinear realms. The particular part of the nonlinear, this aspect of the crown chakra that the spirits are directing our attention to is all about unconditional love. So a primary medicine for us now is about learning and understanding and connecting with unconditional love. This crown chakra represents um, in an Egyptian lineage initiation. So it's a learning. It's, a, it's an opening into new possibilities. It's a way of coming to understand as a human being what unconditional love feels like. What is it like to know it and feel it and be it? We have all sorts of learning about conditions for love. So unconditional love means we're unlearning all of those things that have, that creates blocks and expectations and limits around our own experience of love, a wide, vast, open field of love. And uh, ways we would say it applies here, but not there. Uh, ways that it's episodic, situational. Those are all kinds of conditions that we've learned. The spirits are calling us to approach this, this time as an opportunity to really open into the medicine of unconditional love. Needing to explore it, get to feel it. What is that? What is that really? beyond an intellectual understanding or use of, use of the words. And one of our teachers is shown here at the very beginning of this uh, energy line, the first bone piece who speaks in the ceremony. And this is the Mother Earth. She is here in a very empowered, fully expressed uh, position, the way she is speaking is from a very clear, present, empowered, knowing place. She is close to this area of the face. You can feel symbolically by the ear and the eyes and the nose and the mouth, this the sensory place where we gather up information. She's calling to us. She's, she's calling to our uh, seeing of her, to our meeting of her, connecting with her. She's a teacher about unconditional love. So even in this time where we could uh, 
have a we have a very long list and strong awareness of uh, things out of balance with our earth yet she is not showing up in uh, a compromised state Sh she's an elder uh, for us humans are one of the more recent newcomers to the planet she's our elder She's also our home. She's sitting here, um, you know, she's the context. She's our surroundings. She's the, she's the space uh, in which we live. She's the being. Uh, our English language is so challenging to describe. We're with her and we're distinct. We, 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 she provides home and we are in connection with her. So a deeply inter interconnected relationship. So Mother Earth is a teacher about unconditional love. The spirit being who, who's represented in this crown chakra is vulture medicine, is the teacher of unconditional love. So we have a, a, some, some different teachers coming to help us, um, help guide us in this learning. In the Egyptian lineage, um, uh, who, which uh, carries the initiation around this particular tradition around this uh, chakra that I've been describing being the unconditional love uh, medicine. Um, the vulture, uh, one of her names is Moot, M-U-T, Moot. And she is described as the firstborn. So she's the first to come into life she is, uh, she is what life is made up of. Unconditional love is the material, the energy that life is made up of, made out of, built with. We are too, each and every one of us, each and every human is, is made up of unconditional love. So Vulture is a teacher about, also about coming to know this medicine. And as we open our awareness, it's, it's an unfolding, an initiation opens the door, and then we begin to learn more about it. And this then is come carried back into the body. Uh, the second pointer, second pointer bone or second pointer line picks up the story from there, it comes right into the body. So this is about embodying love. And the symbol in this part of the symbol this spiral is a new beginning, a new moon, the opening of a new cycle. This is an extraordinary change-making medicine. Unconditional love sets us into a new beginning. It sets us off into the way of how we can be around these aspects of gratefulness, appreciation, deeply felt connectedness while also grieving and moving through love. Unconditional love holds and feeds and nourishes all of that in our lives, opens a new beginning for all of this in our lives. And here are the bone pieces that are uh, um, here in the beginning of the new are the eagle and the hawk, and they're very strongly expressed. They're very empowered and, and um, in their fullest energy. And the eagle is about visioning, and the hawk is about holding pure attention on those visions. So here we have this opening into unconditional love, really exploring what it is, how to feel it with the mother earth as a guide, this medicine of the vulture. And then we vision how, how we're gonna be with that. How, what does it mean? How does it feel? How do we live when we are embodying it? Eagle medicine and hawk. So holding the vision and aiming clear and pure attention. 
my cat Lily just meowed about that. So she's also bringing an emphasis to the power of that uh, engagement with eagle medicine, visioning, and hawk medicine, holding our pure attention. This um, energy line continues. And at the end of the energy line, we have the vulture spirit. So the vulture bone herself shows up in this whole conversation about unconditional love. And she's lying there in a, in a, in a place on the ground symbolically that is about um, a turning of the time, a significant shifting. And what the vulture medicine is describing is that when we untangle from judgments, when we undo our engagement with um, conditional love, we move ourselves toward and into the new beginning, a new way of living, a new way of being that truly enables us to live a grateful, connected, and allowing the uh, experience of grief and loss to be felt and shared and um, given its ample space to. So unconditional love is so accentuated as an essential medicine for all of us to uh, learn and engage with. It creates the turning of the times for you personally and for us on the planet. And as we embody this possibility, we really start to feel it. We start to do these shiftings of the undoing of patterns that keep us from being um, purely loving in all circumstances, respectful and accepting and free of judgment. This energy line carries us into the left leg. This is a visioning for our uh, life, for the walk. The leg is symbolically your walk, your path, how you're going to walk this medicine what will your life look like day by day by day to have unconditional love alive inside of you through the ordinary moments of everyday life? And then as we continue on from there, as we start to hold that vision, what happens is the, the, the story continues on from this visioning to how we carry it and hold unconditional love as a tool in our hands. The energy flow takes us now over to the hand on the right side. This is living in the physical 3D life. This is how we are building our lives. The the part of the hand where this energy line goes is a place filled with incredible capacity to generate change. So this, the guidance from the earth, our connection with the earth, our embodying of unconditional love, uh, when we envision how we will walk it, how we will walk with unconditional love, as an embodiment and how we will utilize it as a tool uh, awakens uh, extraordinary possibilities in our human existence, each of us individually and collectively on the planet. So from this current moment forward, from today to tomorrow, from today through a through a next cycle of time, however you are marking that, a next moon cycle, a next earth season, a next year, a next decade. Uh, 
as we explore gratitude, uh, coming in a little more detailed about gratitude, we will go to see where the bear is sitting. Bear is the bringer, the teacher of gratitude in the bundle. And the bear is sitting right in the central channel. Uh, so it's very present. This is a very present uh, time teaching from the spirits about, about bringing gratefulness alive now. Even in a time of challenge, uh, even when we might say everything is not just going my way, uh, the bear is um, uh, uh, shows about gratitude. The way the bear described gratitude to me is a wide open welcoming of the gifts, a wide open welcoming of the gifts. And what happens with that is is shown by Bobcat, the effect of that, one of the effects first is your own empowerment. The piece sitting right next to the bear is the Bobcat and the Bobcat is represents you, you as an individual. And the Bobcat is standing on all fours, Bobcat being Bobcat, empowered, clear, um, moving through life genuinely. This is a walking, that unconditional love medicine, genuinely. Uh, being grateful, genuinely. Welcoming the gifts of being alive. Receiving gratitude, receiving others' gratefulness, and sharing it. It's interactive. Receiving gifts with gratitude and giving with gratefulness. So the, it creates a very uh, deeply rooted self-empowerment. And then that feeds your connectedness, which is shown by the other Bobcat piece, who's just a little bit uh, uh, away here on the other side of this first pointer line. So they're deeply connected, little diagonal across the symbol. And that, that um, Bobcat piece too is on all fours. So great gratitude uh, um, is a medicine which empowers you personally and empowers you in all your relationships. Gratefulness, the, the awareness of appreciation, the awareness uh, that the gifts life brings um, empowers you in how you also see and relate with others. It's, it's an interaction that is, is, in Katase, we would describe heart to heart. Um, great, here would be gratefulness to gratefulness, unconditionally loving to unconditionally loving. What is happening here back with your piece also, the bobcat piece that represents you sitting with bear medicine is the great horn owl medicine comes alive. This is about trusting your inner knowing, letting your uh, inner knowings um, be the guide for how you live your life. Great horn owl is very unique and how they gather up information and then choosing how they move in the, in the next action they take in their life according to that, that understanding, that, that inner, that it's a, it's a relationship with the information gathered up and how they understand it based on their inner reference point and then how they move. These are birds who fly at night they're very unique in their movement in their life. They trust their own inner knowing. They're not trying to be someone else. So as you, this gratitude and the self-empowerment hand in hand with the unconditional lovingness, following your inner knowing takes you to your own personal awakening, all that you're wanting to awaken more and more and more in your life. 
the movement is from the from the very new beginning toward a, a seeding and a rooting of the possibilities. They're growing now with the springtime. This is also the awakening into the living your song as the elders described you being you. And what is happening here is we meet up with mountain spirit. And there are two different mountain spirits who live in this bone. And what they are speaking about is our relational dynamic. Uh, what they teach about is seeing and being seen. So your, your empowerment in you, this unconditionally loving embodiment, the embodying of love, this gratefulness, there are, there are very intimate connections being woven. And, and this medicine of seeing and being seen. Seeing yourself genuinely, no positioning of better or less. Those are the distortions and the lies. And seeing others without any concepts of overlay of better or less, worthy of love, deserving of disrespect, all of those kind of conditions being cleared away. To truly live the seeing and being seen mountain medicine, we're going to need to to do some undoing of old patterns. This is dung beetle, the, the, the black colored piece. It's underlying the mountain medicine. So to have a truly steady mountain medicine, you know, an unshakable foundation in this capacity to see yourself and others with clarity, with honoring of all of their gifts with respect for who they are and why they're on the planet, whether you agree with them or not, whether you condone what they do or not. That's not, that's not the question here. It's about, can you simply see? Can you see who is as they are? Can you see what is as it is in you and other beings? And we need to activate dung beetle medicine in order for that to come alive. Right now, dung beetles asleep. Dung beetles medicine is the sacred task of taking away what no longer belongs. Dung beetle medicine clears away um, the residue, um, the, the no longer needed, um, the things that if they're held on to will create ill health and imbalance and um, uh, distortion. Because here, here it's underlying the mountain. It would keep your foundation off balance. So the, the dung beetle is saying this, this movement, this, this, this clarity of your own empowerment, this deep rootedness and unconditional love, the relationship with mother earth, honoring her as elder, a teacher, a guide, um, that process, that healing journey involves dung beetle medicine, undoing, unlearning, leaving the old behind. This, this undoing is um, accentuated again by a couple other spirits who are in this whole conversation. So we'll zoom in again so you can see up close. We have the tumbleweed and the lizard. The lizard talks about, uh, are we numbed out? Are we, are we lost in old habits? The masks as the elders called our psychological and social conditioning that keeps us um, uh, recycling through patterns, belief systems that are situated in fear and they're situated in judgment, in all these hierarchical concepts, judgments against self and others in life. The lizard here is like the dung beetle sleeping. <laughs> and so this medicine needs to be activated this to, to, to really engage 
be fully in gratitude, deeply genuine and true connectedness and honoring griefs and losses, we need to be living awake. Lizard medicine, waking up. And it's in the gifts of the East, which symbolically this spiral represents the waking up, the coming into the knowing of your own song, you being you. And, and uh, next to here, the medicine of tumbleweed. This is the tumbleweed who forgot to tumble. So, so again, a sense of a, um, the, the, the habit of staying in the status quo. Um, for you personally to, to be changing in these ways of an embodying love, feeling this deep connectedness with the earth, grateful in, in empowered to empowered relationships, heart to heart relationships, this is, a, this is a process of waking up. So we need to find ways to keep seeking it, our own awakening. It's a lifetime journey. It's a process and unfolding. The earth is here strongly as a teacher. And also to do this uh, dynamic um, that's held in the center of this spiral here with the mountain spirit to really see and be seen. Uh, we have other guides being shown in the center of the spiral uh, just below. They're very lined up here, they're connected and they're in the same position, just, just a different spiral. And in this spiral, we had dragonfly medicine who is about ancient traditions these are modalities of living and healing and relating that are very different than contemporary um, hierarchical based ways. Um, these are ceremonial ways that assist you waking up. These are ways of healing that help you really see yourself and see others. They open your eyes. Um, this can be on the very... Um, uh, physical levels, like what we eat, what we consume, what is in our physical spaces that helps us be clear. So our, our awarenesses, our senses, our, our mind, our capacities to um, experience ourselves and others are clear, open, awake, aware. And other traditional ways that help you settle deeply into you. Um, Today, you're experiencing a bone throwing ceremony. It's a lineage uh, that has, has not been influenced by uh, Anglo westernized ways, it, it well protected for a long, long time. So it can help us untangle from the socialization that would keep us stuck in our sleepness. So the, the questing for um, gratefulness, to really feel grateful, the questing for, to really feel our connectedness, while also honoring, acknowledging losses, personal and collective. Um, it, these are healing, these are healing processes. These involve shiftings of our own understanding of ourselves and others. Um, these aren't just uh, like, take, take a, take a pill and it, will we'll, it'll be all in, in different. It'll be all different now. You know, it'll be all better now. These are, these are personal uh, pursuits, healing pursuits that, that have so much empowerment and intimacy um, with other humans and with all other forms of life on the earth. So let's also take a look then where grief shows up for us. Um, so we can get some specific guidance around this question about honoring grief and loss. So in the, in the bone bundle, it, the, the uh, dandelion is a spirit who shows us about grief and grieving. And this bone spirit is this little piece 
here as being pointed to in the photo and it's in the center of another spiral. This spiral where the dandelion spirit is sitting is in the gifts of the West. This is the ending, the, the gifts of death and dying of completions of cycles. One of the things dandelion is saying to us is that grief is natural when there are endings of cycles, completions, um, it can be physical death um, during a time of uh, the coronavirus uh, over these recent months. Um, this uh, facing of death has come very close, much more in, in, in many spaces where conversations around death may not have been had, not at the ways, not in the ways it's coming forward. Um, death is always around us. It's a natural part of life on this planet. So grieving losses, the, the deaths that have been close to you, the deaths of people you love, whether related with the coronavirus or not, there, there are lots of other things going on on our planet at this time too. This is endings of all kinds, completions of cycles. Um, these can also be what we know of the dying away of species, other species than human beings that you have grief about. These can be um, deaths, uh, endings that you know of that have occurred in the past that are occurring now and that you're anticipating. Grief needs a lot of room. Grief needs space. Um, and what is being described here in these uh, with the other spirits, there's a whole circle standing around grief about how we need to undo from any um, limiting concepts about grief. Grief wants to be let out of the box. Um, one way of understanding that is that it's allowed room for you to feel. There's often ways we hold it back. We're afraid of opening the floodgates. We're not sure we'll ever um, stop grieving once we start. Um, the spirits here are saying there is room for without the expression of it is actually, when we don't express it, is actually the compromise. It's in the not expressing of it that we actually are going against our own well-being, creating imbalance by the, the tree frog who's sitting here showing imbalance when we box it in, when we box grief in. Grief, the dandelion, is being touched by creativity um, one of the medicines here is about unboxing grief, untangling from any ideas of this is how grief is expressed, and this is the time frame it's allowed, and this is who gets to grieve and who doesn't get to grieve, and who ought to be done, and, and who might be given a little more time and space. Um, this is really opening up our understandings about what grief feels like, what grief looks like, that how you might grieve might be different than how someone else might grieve. There are different um, cultural ways that are used to honor death and grief and endings. And these ancient lineages that we were talking about with dragonfly medicine, these medicines are also in relationship with each other. The, the ways uh, that you may have in your life, whatever lineages and cultures and uh, familial traditions you have that want to be brought to this time of grief, they're essential. They're really needed. 
There may be ones that you can explore that are different than what you have known before to, to assist you through a time of ending. Um, when perhaps there are many people who are not able to actually engage with their traditional ways of honoring death. They're not able to be with the loved one who is dying or their whole family cannot gather at this time. There are, there are, there are challenges to traditional ways right now. This, the spirits are saying it is vital not to let go of what ceremonial ways, honoring ways that, that are brought toward and into processes of death and dying, grief and loss, endings of cycles. So this creativity is really needed. It brings, it brings life, brings new possibilities, innovation to grieving, to honoring, uh, honoring how losses can be, um, can be uh, respected, acknowledged, felt, shared communally, and how you personally can move through your own process. There, there will be shiftings in the relational field that Sandhill Crane is nearby What's being described here are also is grief around changes in your in your relational world. The Santo Crane talks about who are your people, your family, your community. Uh, and here are an indication of changes. These can be because of physical death. These can be decisions um, that you have made about relationships that um, you are choosing not to continue in or choosing how to be in differently or the current circumstances of life have created unexpected change. Uh, for many people that's around work life and school life and family life and friendships and um, uh, visiting, traveling, being with, with different people in different parts of the planet. There have been extraordinary changes created by outside circumstances. And the grief around that is really needed. And it's not about comparison, com comparing and competing for whose grief is the biggest. This is the scorpion nearby who's saying there's this judgment that's being brought to bear on this whole conversation around grief, around losses, the kinds of losses, around relational changes, um, and that there's, there's judgments being overlaid. Like whose loss is the worst? So they really get to grieve but your loss isn't so much. So, you know, you're just supposed to kind of get it together. These kind of ideas are completely contrary to where the spirits are beginning us, uh, directing us in the beginning of the, of the uh, ceremony here where they're directing us to go with this understanding of unconditional love. So when we embody unconditional love, we will bring ourselves to the grieving without this patterning of judgment or disregard or competing around loss, around deserving us a space to grieve, around um, uh, um, how much time you get how many tears get to be shed if it's tears that are how you show grief. So this is a really big reconstruction of our relationship with death, the gifts of the West, and, and our relationship with grieving, which is inherently embedded in our relationships with others. So we're, 
we're, we're first called in the ceremony into this reconstruction of how we relate with ourselves, with others, this, this capacity to see and be seen. And then that gives us a new kind of foundation from, from which we can actually enter more fully, more genuinely, with deeper healing, our own personal grieving, our grieving about what's happening around us in the collective, it might be our community, it might be collective humanity, uh, what we know about the horrendous losses in the past, going on now, anticipation of some to come. Our reorienting into this deep learning with Mother Earth as an elder and the medicine of the vulture as unconditional love allows us to bring ourselves to the to the understandings of endings, of the dying away of individuals, of social structures, of social patterns. We can bring ourselves differently in a way we stay empowered and we are feeding and nourishing the empowerment of others. Love, unconditional love can be brought to the gifts of grieving, to the death and the dying away, to the endings we experience personally and collectively. And all of this learning, when we revisit all of this dynamic and the, the third pointer line, which says, where are you heading with all of this? Again, we come back to this, to this movement into what we carry as tools in our hands to build our lives. We're awakening a deeply rooted, uh, centered in ourselves, empowered, free of judgment, a, a genuine heart to heart, respect to respect, unique to unique kind of relational world and learning how to have new tools to continue to build our lives. So gratitude has full expression, bear medicine. So connectedness, the vulture medicine and the bobcats and the mountain spirit, seeing and being seen, equity, harmony, respect which naturally has room for grieving and honoring the losses through the course of our lives. We are coming away with dynamic change-making tools to keep building our personal lives and life um, with the whole of the web of life in our consciousness, listening with the mother earth. Thank you so much for being in ceremony today. From my heart to the heart of the Mother Earth to your heart. Mana all, umana all.